Christmas real in the darkness, sharing God's Christmas light, shining through us, sharing God's Christmas season we make Christmas real. In the darkness, sharing God's Christmas light, shining through us, sharing God's Christmas light.
God's Christmas light shining through us, sharing God's Christmas light in our smile and in our welcome, in the ways that we make people feel, in our gifts and in our thank yous, in the moments we make Christmas real. Christmas light shining through us, sharing God's Christmas light in our parties and nativities, in preparing and sharing our meals, in the shops and in the hospitals, in the places we make Christmas real. In the Christmas light shining through us, sharing God's Christmas light. season we make Christmas real. In the darkness, sharing God's Christmas light. Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. We're really glad that you're able to spend some time with us in worship as we start the new year together. As we gather together this morning, we want to take a moment and acknowledge that everything we're using this morning for content is covered under one of these two licenses, either CCLI, number Charlie Sierra Papa Lima 113699, and or one license, Alpha 727787. As we gather together, we also want to take a moment and acknowledge the traditional territory upon which we gather this morning. Wherever it is, we find ourselves situated. For us here in Prince George, it's the Kletley Tene, and we invite you to type into our socials, if that's how you're joining with us this morning, in the comment box or in the conversation line, the traditional territory upon which you find yourself. As I said, for us here in Prince George, it's the Kletley Tene, and we give thanks for their stewardship of all of creation over the generations and we express a desire to have a different kind of relationship with all of Canada's Indigenous and Métis peoples, one based in honour, deep respect, and reconciliation. Before we move too far into things, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our life and ministry together here at Trinity United Church. This is particularly relevant if you're part of the resident Trinity community, but even if you're part of the wider Trinity community, there's some things here you might find interesting and helpful. The first one is dial-up worship. At some point on Monday, depends on how easy the system works with us, the audio from today's worship will be posted, and you can access it by simply dialing this number, 250-563-9615. The whole thing will play for you. Unfortunately, we can't pause it or stop it or, or fast-forward or rewind, but the whole service will be there for you uh, to listen to. Long distance charges will apply if that's applicable to you. Following worship this morning, give us about 15 minutes and then we're going to restart our Coffee and Friends uh, session so we'll be able to check in with one another for the first time in 2021. We're continuing to do uh, masks for sale. They're available in two sizes, medium and large. Someone with a head about my size uses a large one. They're available in colors that traditionally are associated with men and women. And we're calling that protecting one another. No matter how you go about it, you need to wear a mask whenever you move around in public. Why not buy one here for five bucks? The next inquiry session is coming up. This time the theme is Movable Feast, January 10th from 6 to 7.30. 6 to 7 is the inquiries portion 
and then a half hour social time afterwards. The Zoom link will be included with your ticket. That's a little bit different this time. We're asking you to pre-register. You can find the link on our website and you'll find it tomorrow on our social media platforms. Once you register, when you get your ticket by email, the link for Zoom will be included. And that way, we're trying to manage making sure that everything is as safe as possible for everyone to fully participate. Starting a new year, we continue to support our ministry here at Trinity United Church. There are many, many ways to do that. You can do it by hitting the Donate Now button on our websites or in our emails. You can drop by 3555, our main office, and drop it in the mail slot. It's covered and protected, so you can do that whenever you want. Or you can do an e-transfer to bookkeeper at trinitypg.ca. All of those are secure options. However it is that you want to support our ministry and make sure we can continue to do the kinds of things that we do every day to make a difference in the lives of individuals, our community, and through things like the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada, indeed we make a difference around the world. Those are all of our life and ministry pieces for this morning. We're going to invite you to share the peace of Christ with us. If you're with us on one of our social platforms, then we just invite you to type that in. The peace of Christ be with you, and that's a way of virtually sharing it with one another. If you want to take a picture of yourself waving or bowing, then you could do that too as a way of sharing the peace of Christ. If there are other people with you this morning, we invite you to share the peace of Christ physically with one another. Let's take a moment to greet one another for the first time in 2021 with the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Uh, we, we, we did that story last week. This is a different way of telling it. What was um, wrong with last week's way of telling it. I mean, we had a priest, a prophetess, two pregnant women singing, angels, shepherds, two baby boys, and a very busy Holy Spirit. It was the, a great story, very, very Christmassy. This is another way of telling the same story. This one goes back to the beginning of time. Before we ever saw or knew Mary's son, he was dancing with the spirit in the mystery that is God. That's very poetic. It gets even better. Remember Elizabeth's son? Yes, I mean, when he grew up, his job was to get people ready for God. The light of the world is coming, he said. The light and life of God is going to be seen in a person just like us. The glory of God embodied and real, living among us. Mary's son, the one everyone was getting ready for. Yes, Jesus, existing since time began, entering into human history, meeting us in the flesh, in the room. Let there be light. I see it. God's big plan revealed. Same story told in another way. First as a baby, now as a man. All the grace of God, all the truth of God, for us to recognize and receive, befriending us, inviting us to belong. On this new day, in this new year, we gather. On this new day, in this new year, we pause. On this new day, in this new year, God is, God was, God will always be. Light shines in the darkness. The new day begins, and we, God's people, praise God's new day.
This might be a bit of a new one for us, but it'll be familiar as we move through the Christmas season. In the darkness, sharing God's Christmas light, shining through us, sharing God's Christmas light in our smile. Biffing, Bonther, Bab, Wowzer, Wicked, Amazeballs, Awesome, Transcendent, Ineffable, Holy, Mighty, Mysterious God. The words may change, but the feeling does not. When we human beings, tiny, insignificant creatures that we are, catch a glimpse of your glory, no words are big enough and none are needed. A word is spoken from the deep stillness and all we have to do is listen. A child is born and we are overwhelmed with, by the powerful protective love that we feel. Hope pushes through the cracks in our defenses like weeds through the cracks in the pavement, and your life takes root in us. God, you are the source of all life, and you have chosen to live among us. Words fail us. As we gather and remember the new thing you are doing in us, through Trinity United and through other faith communities, help us to celebrate three amazing years of ministry and help us to listen to the call of your spirit as we discern where 2021 will take us. Creator and enlivening God, we bless you for every spark of life that fizzes above us and below us, around us and within. For every moving thing, the wind in the trees, the waves on the shore, 
the planets and the heavens. For every growing thing, grass and flowers and trees, bulbs that lie dormant until the time is ripe. We celebrate the existence of every creature that breathes with the breath of your life. Creeping, flying, leaping, diving, soaring things, and human beings who imagine ourselves to be the pinnacle of creation, but are unwilling to accept the responsibility that brings. Forgive us, merciful God, for walking around your world with our eyes closed to the beauty and wonder of creation, its fragility and hurt, and your presence in both. Remind us of those rare, precious moments when we have seen your glory and open our eyes to see it again. You exalt with those for whom life is full and free. You grieve with those for whom it is constrained and joyless. You draw close and invite us to join you there, our challenge to be bearers of the light and companions in the darkness, to allow your spirit so to fill and transform our lives that those who see us will have seen something of your glory and, be, and been touched by your grace. At this New Year's beginning, when many, ourselves included, are looking to the future with more anxiety than hope, may we go forward confidently with you, our hands held firmly and safely in yours, and our lives enfolded in your care. We're not perfect, and yet we are each a piece of the reflection of holy mystery contained in human form. Each of us is a part of the image of God. Each of us contains a divine spark that calls us into relationship. That relationship is love. It is being valued, affirmed, wanted, and included. It is a love that has no limitations or consent boxes to tick. It's a love that doesn't require you to accept any cookies or confirm that all the information is correct. It's a love based on this simple truth. God loves you and God loves me, not because we are perfect, but because each of us reflects a small part of the light of God.
The scripture reading is taken from the book of John, chapter, uh, John, 1 John, verses 1 to 9 and 10 to 18. In the beginning, the Word was already there. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him. Nothing that has been made was made without him. Life was in him, and that life was the light for all people, the light that shines in the darkness. But the darkness has not overcome the light. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came to be a witness about that light. He was a witness so that all people might believe. John himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives life to everyone was coming into the world. The word was in the world, and the world was made through him. But the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own. But his own people did not accept him. Some people did accept him and did believe in his name. He gave them the right to become children of God. To be a child of God has nothing to do with human parents. Children of God are not born because of human choice or because a husband wants them to be born. They are born because of what God does. The word became a human being. He made his home with us. We have seen his glory. It is the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, and the word was full of grace and truth. John was a witness about the word. John cried out and said, this was the one I was talking about. I said, he who comes after me is more important than I am. He is more important because he existed before I was born. God is full of grace. From him, we have received all grace in place of the grace already given. In the past, God gave us grace through the law of Moses. Now, grace and truth come to us through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only is God and is at the Father's side. The one at the Father's side has shown us what God is like. This is part of our Christian story. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Friends, let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Be near us, Holy One, as we contemplate this story handed down to us throughout the generations. Help us to be mindful that while the words are ancient, the wisdom is current. Help us to find ways of rediscovering the depths of this story and enlivening it and enfleshing it in our current reality. Bless, O oh God, the words of my mouth, the hearts, minds, and spirits of those that hear them and help turn them into action. Amen. It might seem strange to still be telling the Christmas story. Yes, a little bit differently, because this time we're using it from John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was of God. And yet it's still part of that Christmas story. John pointing towards something that was going to happen. God doing something radically different in the world that would change the understanding of human history and how we interact with one another and with holy mystery forever and ever. It might seem strange because we're often tempted to get to Boxing Day and, and decide it's time to put everything back in boxes. 
for many of us, that's how, what we understand Boxing Day to be. It's the day we de-decorate for Christmas. We put everything back in boxes. Except the historical understanding of the term was quite different, actually. It was on the second day of Christmas, and people would go through their belongings, and having received some things for Christmas, they would box things up to give away to others. Hence, Boxing Day. It was something you did as a, as a response, as an embodiment to Emmanuel, to God with us, to that portion of divinity that could fit into human form coming and walking amongst us and challenging us to live lives in a different kind of way. And then the third day, and the fourth day, until you get to the twelfth day of Christmas, which is coming up this week on Old Christmas Day. That's the season of Christmas. That's why we're still singing Christmas carols, still singing Advent hymns, still telling the Christmas story, because even if society would like us to believe that Christmas is over and done with, and now it's time to prepare for Valentine's Day, the reality of it is, is Christmas is only mid-season. We're only halfway through. There's still a lot of Christmas left to, believe, to be lived. And that's one of the challenges when you shift from Christmas Day to New Year's Day and you want to kind of get on with the new year. But Christmas provides us with this opportunity, this in-between time, this, this liminal experience to ponder what it is the new year really needs to be all about. What do we want to carry with us from the previous year? What lessons did we learn? What understandings do we want to make sure we don't throw away even if 2020 was a lot of challenge, a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration and anger that boiled over into the streets? It's one of those things where so many folks, I noticed this year more than any other year, they started wishing one another Happy New Year on New Year's Eve. Not like at 11.50 or, you know, 11.59, but at like 9 in the morning. It's like we couldn't wait to get to 2021. We couldn't wait to get out of 2020 as if everything in 2020 had been a horrible, nasty, unsettling experience. And yet, there are lessons from 2020 that I hope we remember. Here's an example of one of the memes that caught my attention on social media as we neared the end of 2020. It's lessons from 2020. Some of them include, the world can change quickly. Friends matter greatly. Alone and lonely are different. Hope matters Learn from the past. Small moments are beautiful. Kindness is a great gift. Optimism is priceless. Be grateful for family. Heroes truly exist. Give back generously. Never stop trying. Reach out to those you love. Live with bravery. Not everything that happened in 2020 was a bad thing. And I hope that as we're anxious and, and enthusiastic about what 2021 might bring and, and what a vaccine, when enough of us receive it, might bring, I'm hopeful that we don't forget that. We don't forget things like the Black Lives Matter movement and that veil that was cracked and shattered, hopefully a little bit, that we might recognize the realities that folks who aren't white experience each and every day by those of us who are white. Pushing that envelope a little further, we might truly come to, to wrestle with what it means to have privilege in all kinds of different forms and the response that that calls from, from us. I hope we, we don't forget those lessons of what it means to reach out and care for one another, to slow down and stop over-programming our days so we're running from one event to the next event to the next event. 
I hope we remember the joy of sitting around the dinner table and having conversation again, of gathering together with family and friends over great distances to play board games online, or to simply check in with one another and see how we're doing, to drop muffins off at someone's house or bring them a meal to check in to make sure they're still okay. In other words, how to be community. There's a lot of anxiety still about 2021. There's no question that that is, that that is true. There's no way we could still be in the midst of a global pandemic and there not be some anxiety, and yet there is still hope. John pointed towards a light that came into the world, and no matter how deep the shadows became, they could never, ever overcome that light. That light, friends, is in you and me. It's in the way that we keep Christmas well, not, not just on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, or even the 12 days of Christmas, but the 12 months of the year. It's the way in which we embody what it means to, to kindle that light within ourselves and within others, to share it with the world so that the shadows of the world can be pushed back. That which would seek to destroy us or limit us or dehuman us or somehow create a sense of otherness, of isolation, of loneliness can be pushed back by a light that knows no boundaries. That isn't about race or creed or color or gender expression or gender identity. It isn't about affluence or shape or size or ability. It isn't about orientation. It isn't about age or language. It is about the light of Christ that came into the world at a time of great turmoil and great upheaval, and military occupation to say God is still with us. God is still active in the world. God is still calling us into relationship. And through me and you, God is still doing something radical in the world. So what are you anxious about as 2021 begins? That might be a very easy list to create. But also, what are you hopeful for in 2021? What do you want to carry with us from 2020 as learnings, as understandings, as witnesses and testimony to the power of God? There was a, a piece on social media this week of 20 things that happened in 2020 here in Prince George that people didn't want to forget. What is it that you don't want to forget? And what is it that God is calling us as Trinity United and as faith communities across Canada and around the world to do, to be, to enflesh and enliven in 2021? That light that came into the world is still here. It's in you, and it's in me, and it's in the church. The question for me is, how do we share it with one another and the world so we can lower anxiety and increase hope? Amen.
as we gather together to share prayers for others and ourselves, we invite you to name those people that you carry in your hearts and on your minds, the situations around the world, the events, places that are important to you. Hold them collectively together, spread out across great distances and yet united as one body, as one community. As we gather together this morning, there are some folks that we want to name specifically. Claudia N., Jim and Sylvia, Carmen and Brad, Laura B., Donna, Aaron, Bevan, Bruce C., Gary G., Gordon and Marg, Brenda and Irv, Jackie H., Sydney B., Larry T., Joe M., Beverly M., Jeff, Laura H., Mike, Sig V., John B., Karen L., Brian, Holly and Mike, Heather L., CJ. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for all of these people as well as those that we name within the silence of our hearts and minds. For we are your people and your light burns within us as we join together in prayer. God of beauty, light, and truth, God of life in full abundance, we give thanks for everything that enhances our lives and makes them worthwhile. Gratefully, we acknowledge the thought thoughtfulness of friends and the kindness of strangers. Our massive good fortune to have food and warmth and shelter, a wealth of knowledge and entertainment at the touch of a keypad. We are grateful for phone calls, Skyping and Zooming, when the people we love cannot be with us, and for the great joy of being together when we can. Loving God, we ask your blessing on all who work to make life richer and fuller for others in a myriad of different ways. Scientists, artists, musicians, comics and philosophers, careers paid and unpaid, listeners likewise, the unseen people who clean up the places where we live and work and our planet those who campaign for future change, and those who roll up their sleeves and get stuck in to help. God, bless their endeavors and bless them too. And while it is not our place to judge anyone, far less to curse them, there are those whose plans we would gladly ask you to foil, those who bully buy and cheat their way to power, and then abuse it for their own ends. Those who make war, and those who make it possible by profiting from the manufacture and sale of arms. Those who steal the birthright of the poor by holding on to their wealth and imagining that they deserve it. Those who destroy the childhood of children the innocence of young men and women, the dignity of older people by exploiting them for money or personal gratification. God, judge them as we dare not and cause their endeavors to fail. God of life, may we stand with you on the side of all that is life enhancing God of light, may your light shine in us and through us until the darkness is dispelled. And may all the credit be yours, all honor and glory now and forever. Help us to bear your light, God of grace and future potentiality. As we join together in singing the prayer Jesus taught through his disciples.
that light that came into the world calls a response forth from us. Like the Magi who came and sought out the Christ child offering their gifts that they had to bring, we too offer our gifts that we have to bring. We can do that by hitting the donate button on either one of our websites, dropping something off physically at our main office, or by e-transfer at bookkeeper at trinitypg.ca. We also offer the gifts of our time and our talent as we engage in Christ's ministry in the world, known to us as Trinity United. So let's take a moment and reflect on how it is we are called to respond and how we are called to give. Friends, I invite you to join with me in our offertory prayer. O God, we respond to the gift of your light with our commitment to help it shine in our lives, in our church, in our community, and in the world. Bless the gifts we bring of time, ability, and resources so that together we might create Christmas well and help your Christmas light guide us throughout the whole year. Amen. As our time for worship ends and our time of service begins, the light of God is in you to share with one another and the world. Go and share this God light so that together we can challenge the shadows wherever they are found. Go and be the church. Go and be Trinity united. And as we go about our daily activities, may the love of God shown to us in holy mystery be with us. May the presence of the Christ made known to us in a child and in the resurrection enliven us. May the presence of the Spirit stir us so that together we might find ways of shining our light and resisting any of the shadows that might challenge us, trusting that we are forever held in the palms of loving and caring hands. Amen.
Friends, thanks again for joining with us here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. We're really glad you were able to spend this time with us in worship. It's our third anniversary as Trinity United, so we asked you to get something that could be cake for you and stick a candle in it. Join us for coffee and friends after worship, or just take some time today at some point. Light that candle and name something that you're thankful for as part of Trinity's ministry, and celebrate our birthday. Wherever you find yourself today, we hope it's a place where you can be safe, be calm, and be community. We wish for each and every one of you all of the blessings that God has to offer in 2021 as a new year begins. So have a great week. Enjoy the connections you make with friends and family, neighbors and co-workers, virtually and safely in person. As we continue to wait for the vaccine to roll out, make sure you wear your mask in public. Sanitize your hands, stay away from crowds, work from home if you can and if you can't, because we know that it's a privilege to be able to do that. Go to work as safely as possible. Let's remember to be nice and kind to one another and not get upset when somebody tells us that's not the right way to wear your mask or can you please stand six feet apart let's remember the story of christmas and embody it as we go about our daily routines and let's join together again for worship next week here at trinity united church in prince george british columbia at 10 a.m pacific standard time see you then